This is Mubeen. We are talking about the cardiovascular system. The topic today is heart failure. Let's start. Our heart is made up of two pumps, right and the left heart. Right heart receives the blood from the body and pumps it to the lungs, while the left heart receives blood from the lungs and pumps it to the body. This setup actually separates the right and left heart into two separate circuits that are joined in series. The two circuits are pulmonary circuit and systemic circulation. Pulmonary cir circuit being the lungs and the systemic circulation being the body. The, the important structure of the heart are following. Heart has four chambers, right atrium and right ventricle. These two make up the right heart. Left atrium and left ventricle make up the left heart. Blood from the body arrives in the right heart via superior and inferior vena cava. This actually is these are the ones that bring blood to the right atrium. Now blood goes to the right ventricle from the right atrium. Right ventricle then pumps this blood out to the lungs through the pulmonary artery. Blood from the lungs then goes to the left atrium via the pulmonary veins. From here the blood enters the left ventricle and then left ventricle in turn pushes this blood out to the body via aorta. Valve between the right atrium and the ventricle is called tricuspid valve. It has three leaflets. The valve that is present between the, le the left atrium and the left ventricle is called bicuspid valve or mitral valve and it has two leaflets. The aortic valve is the valve between aorta and the left ventricle and the pulmonary valve is the valve that is between the pulmonary artery and the right ventricle. A 70 kilogram healthy man's heart usually has 120 milliliter of blood in its left ventricle at the end of its diastole. Diastole is a stage when the heart is relaxing. This volume of blood is also called end diastolic volume or EDSV. About 60% of this volume is ejected when the heart goes in systole or in contraction. This amount of blood is called stroke volume. Usually the amount is about 70 milliliter. Blood volume remaining in the heart after this volume has ejected is about 50 milliliter, right? So 120 minus 70 is 50 milliliter. This 50 milliliter that stays in the heart at the end of a systole is called end systolic volume. And the fraction of the blood that has been ejected, how do we mathematically calculate that? We take 70 and we divide it with 120 and multiply that all with 100. The percentage that comes out is about 58%. So normally it is 60 to 64%. This percentage of blood that comes out is called ejection fraction. Heart failure is a common syndrome increasing in incidence and prevalence nowadays and the reason for that is increasing age. Heart failure is a disease of old age and as there are more people who are uh, living longer that is, oh, that is why the prevalence and incidence is increasing. Now it is the inability of the heart by definition it is the inability of the heart to pump enough blood to meet body's needs. It can be either due to less filling of the heart or due to less pumping force of the heart so the ejection fraction reduces or stroke volume reduces. So keep in mind either the heart is not filling correctly or heart is not ejecting correctly. There are about 5 million people in the US that have heart failure and approximately 800 new cases every year in the US. And here is the, here is the sad part. 75% of the patients of heart failure are over the age of 65. It is primarily a disease of the old age. Now heart failure can be right-sided or left-sided. So, any of the pump can fail, the right-sided pump or the left-side pump. Or both pumps can fail, so that would be both hearts have failed. 
Patients with left heart failure usually exhibit symptoms due to low cardiac output and elevated pulmonary venous pressure. Dyspnea is a predominant feature. Right heart failure, on the other hand, exhibits signs of fluid retention like ankle edemas and ascites. This is why clinically we say that the left heart failure is a disease with symptoms and the right heart failure is a disease with signs. Also keep in mind that mostly the right heart fails secondary to the left heart failure. This happens when the left heart failure causes elevated pulmonary pressure and fluid accumulation in the lungs. This elevated venous pressure causes increased afterload on the right heart. Long-term increased afterload in the right heart results in right heart failure. 50% of the patients with heart failure have preserved left ventricular systolic function while they have some sort of diastolic dysfunction going on. So about half of the patients have diastolic dysfunction. In developed countries, myocardial infarction and dysfunctioning ventricle due to ischemia are the most common causes of the heart failure. This in turn is primarily, the, the ischemia and infarction, these are in turn primarily due to the coronary artery disease. And what do you think coronary artery disease is due to? Most of the time, uncontrolled diabetes, high cholesterol, atherosclerosis, and so on. Systemic hypertension is an important disease causing heart failure. In the United States, it also is a major contributor towards heart failure in patients that suffer from other cardiac diseases such as the coronary artery disease. So the chronic uncontrolled heart hypertension can exacerbate the other cardiac issues leading the patient towards heart failure. So it is paramount to make sure that hypertension is properly managed.